guys you may have seen recently on uh, my instagram i posted um a couple of photos of some artwork that i did recently um you've probably seen this one the fruits and this one of the summer girl um, and these were all created with these markers. These are the Nova Dual Tip Watercolour Markers. Um, and these are from Trimcraft here in the UK. Um, and they sent me these um, for free to play with and see what I could come up with. And they are absolutely amazing, guys. And I thought I'd do a video to kind of show you... Um, how they work and um what they look like and everything so um yeah i thought i'd show that <laughs> um expand the box um the description box below because there's going to be more information um there for you so go check that out so before i do anything else i am going to rip this out now this is um Dela Rowney mixed media paper. Um, you don't need to use watercolour paper or a mixed media paper with them. Um, they work perfectly well without. I just want to use quite a lot of water in one of the techniques uh, that I um, want to show you. So that's why I'm going to be using a heavy, a heavier um, paper. And I'm going to, um, just so that it's got time to dry, I'm going to use some masking liquid. I love using masking liquid. It's how I created this um, journal card and this um, birthday card. Um, so yeah, I want to show you how they blend together so, so beautifully um, because they are so beautiful. So yeah, this is the um, Molotto. Um, there's loads of different brands out there. I've also used Peebo in the past. Um, so yeah, there's loads of different brands, loads of different prices. So just, you know, if you're interested in using masking fluid, just go for a brand or a price that kind of um, fits what you're looking for, really. Um, I happen to like this one. I'm not sponsored by them or anything uh, because it comes in quite a nice little applicator. If you use masking fluid with a paintbrush, oh my goodness, you have to make sure that you clean that thing out so so well guys because it will ruin your brush because this is gum it dries like rubber um, when you come to take it off you'll be peeling it off and yeah if you've got any of that in your paintbrush oh my gosh when it dries it is horrendous you can basically kiss goodbye to ever seeing that paintbrush again <laughs> So yeah, I'm just going to do this so I can mask off this area and leave it to dry. You can, you can zap it with a heat gun. I do not recommend it because it stinks to high heaven when you do. So yeah, don't, don't do it, it stinks. Um, so just be patient and let it dry. Once um, it's dry, it will be tacky to the, fin to the touch. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way. I feel like, I would show my age if I said I should have done that kind of Blue Peter style, so <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> so the markers come in two different packs. Um, this one is the neutrals pack, and yeah, it's got like the, the skin tones in there and like the earthy kind of tones. And then you've got the brights, so all the rainbowy colours. Um, and they are super, super juicy, guys. Um, I have to say, I get sent things for free, you know, from time to time by different companies. Um, and I do like to be honest with you guys. And um, this isn't the only company that has sent me um, art supplies. So I feel like I can be like totally honest. Um, and I have to say, these are amazing. Absolutely amazing. I was really, really impressed with them. To be honest, they are really good. So they are dual tipped um, and so let's choose a colour that's probably better to see. So they're dual tipped. So one end you've got um, like a, a felt tip looking um, end. And you can use these for colouring in. Um, just 
regular colouring in <laughs> like a velvet pet if you wanted to um, and the other end is the brush tip um, so you can get like a really thin point with that or you can get a wide and etc so yeah they are really 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 vibrant really vibrant and when you mix um, water with them when you add water into the equation they do not lose their vibrancy whatsoever um, so let's do um, uh, a drawing um, so I can show you so I've got some fruit there so maybe we should do a lemon no what I'll do first actually is I will show you um, how um, you can use them and how I would kind of use them for um, illustrations like this and for colouring things in so I would just perhaps um, so you need to look about like, like look at your shading so here I've gone from darker to lighter so I just kind of put a bit of colour on the side there and then if I take a brush and add water to my brush as a regular paintbrush put a bit of water to it you can then just paint over the top of the colour to pick that colour up. You can see it's already started to activate. Um, and then you can just swoosh out with it. Now, unlike some markers, like the watercolour markers, this one, as you can probably see, does not leave any brush stroke or any inclination that you use a pen first. Sometimes when you use... Um, when you use markers like that and then you add water to them the color has already soaked into the paper so even when you activate them with water you can still see where that first kind of intensity of color was you do not get the that with these markers they are it's basically now looks like i just used watercolor and nothing else do you know what i mean it that's literally looks like all i've used so yeah they are pretty good like that this is a really nice idea if you want to um if you're traveling and you want to take some felt tip markers for coloring and also some watercolor these are quite a good um option <laughs> to have um because they kind of do do both so yeah so when i'm kind of shading i usually put like the, pa the paint the the marker on the one side for the darker side and then i'll like drag it out and as you drag it out it gets um less and less concentrated so it gets faded so it fades so you get a nice little shading going on there um and i just build up my colors like that basically so um let's do um let's do a lemon because we've done some some a pineapple and a melon and a le um, lime so let's do um a lemon so i'm just gonna do like a little knob little on the top there and a swoop down and then another little noble nobule um, and that's it I'm only going to draw in half there and I'm gonna go in with another color so let's just do a little swatch oh that's a green don't want that the only thing I will say is the the colors you need to do a swatch with them guys because like this this pen lid to me, I mean, it might just be my eyes. This pen lid to me looks more of a lemony colour, lemon, like a limey colour, but it's more sort of apple colour, I would say. So before you kind of do any artwork with them, or with any with any art supplies in general, really, um, always do a little swatch. Now, I'm going to layer up my colour now, because once these are wet, um, you can't really go over them with a pen it, it kind of doesn't really work the it, it kind of um you can feel the paper started to break down a little bit and so when you run that pen over it again the kind of you can feel like all the fibers of the of the paper and this is when you do end up with that line can you see what i mean like if I move that to the side, you can see that line where I drew that colour in. So if you want to do any kind of layering of colours, you either need to do it um, first when you, before you activate it with water, or you need to let it completely dry and then go back in and activate it again. 
And as you can see there, I kind of went back over. They, they are pretty watertight. Once you once they have dried, they that's it. They don't move again. So you can see I added um, here. The here was where this my first colour stopped, and this bit here is where I added that second colour. So that that part had already dried. So when I added that second colour and then activated that, it's that second colour that has been swooped over to here. That first colour, that's the the line. So that has dried. That has dried fast. So that's not going to budge. That's not going anywhere. Okay, so um, I'm just going to add like a swoop of orange in there just to give that a little bit of extra, extra um, depth and definition. But we, remember, once they've dried, you can always go in and add, and add again. You know, you don't have to think, oh, well, that's that's that now. I've 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 done that. You don't. You can just always go back in and add some more. Doesn't matter. Um, with anything with watercolor you can layer less is always more guys so you know you can always go back in and add add more at a later date so there we go that's my um my lemon i'm gonna let that dry now if i could find my heat gun i'll give that a bit of a blast um my desk is as tidy as ever oh here we go so yeah give that a little bit of a a little bit of a zappy do, and then uh, we're gonna finish it off. Okay, that's now dry. So yeah, I just want to go ahead and um, finish this little one off. Um, we'll get over here to the neutrals. I, we go. I feel like this has kind of gone more of a peachy color, but that's okay. We're just experimenting. This is a kind of a peach, so I'm just gonna add like a few little dots on because lemons are kind of mottled a little bit so yeah because this is dry now you can see that I'm just going in and just using it like a felt tip pen and that's all good um, and just gonna use um, a black drawing pen that's not the right that's a bit too small a nib just to um, make a little um, feature, a little, little face on there. So, a couple of eyes. Oh, hello. Oh, I like doing pinhole mouths, you know. <laughs> um, and all of my illustrations always have pink cheeks. So, that's red. That's pink ish purpley pinky okay so what you can also do guys is you can go directly on to I'm just trying to use the right color so you can go directly on here if you want to and draw some cheeks and just leave them as felt tip or you can go in and draw your cheeks and then use the water to kind of block them around to make them look like watercolor or now this is quite a cool thing if you've got like a like a little swatch pad going on like I, I very often have swatches in the corner if you've got like a separate piece of paper that you're doing your swatches on you can just go ahead and like give yourself a nice little swatch of color get your paintbrush dip it in your water go to your swatch activate it with water Pick it up on your paintbrush and then add it to your picture. Pretty neat, huh? That's pretty cool, I think. And then, yeah, so we've got a little, little lemon character done there. So they're pretty quick, pretty easy. And yeah, they're, these just are so vibrant. I really, really love them. Um, so yeah, let's do some, um, go back to that masking fluid one and um, we will just do some really nice uh, blending. I knocked my, <laughs> my masking fluid 
when I moved it and I didn't realise. So the shape has gone a little bit different to how you saw it. And because there was kind of like liquid everywhere, I took some of it up with my brush and did some splatters around the place. But that's okay, we can still work with it. What I was originally going to do will still work. Um, now, before you use anything, any art supplies over the top of masking fluid, you need to make sure that it is dry because you will ruin and wreck your supplies. So you have been warned. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do some colouring. I'm going to be swatching as I go because I um, want to make sure that I'm getting the colours that I want to um, want to do. But I'm just going to be scribbling away over, over this in random places. But as I said, you want to make sure that your masking fluid is in is totally dry so that you don't wreck these beautiful pens because you'll be very sad and upset if you do <laughs> I've been there guys <laughs> I have totally been there with product with art supplies that I've wrecked because I was too impatient to wait the good thing about this technique is you don't have to be at all precise you know, you can just experiment with it. Um, and I'm just doing this so that I can show you how um, amazing they are when they're um, activated with water together and how beautifully you can get them blending with each other. So yeah, I'm gonna be, the theory was, <laughs> I was gonna be doing a bit of a C kind of thing. This was going to be a bubble, but we'll see. We'll see if we can still pull it off. <laughs> Doesn't look massively bubble shaped now, but we will see. I might still be able to pull it off, but it's just um, the beauty of when, you, when you're making and creating art. The beauty of it is that you don't have to be precise. You can just, you know, uh, do whatever you want to do. Just have fun with the process. So let's get these activated. So I'm just going to be going in circular, circular motions because I want to pick up whatever's around. I don't care because I want it all to, I want it all to blend. So I want to show you how they all blend beautifully. So we've got that green is mixed in there to make a really nice like aquamarine color. You obviously you can leave some bits if you don't want to like here we've got quite an intense bit going on here with the blue you could and i because i haven't watered all of that so you could just leave it i'm gonna activate it a bit more because i want to because i want to i'm going to leave it less and more intense around the masking fluid because the masking fluid when you take it off it will be white and so the contrast will be greater there because um, white against the navy blue the contrast will be greater so obviously if you don't clean your brush in between um, doing things you will still have some of that color on which is which is nice or you can clean your brush off and kind of then go back into it. I'm I'm doing a mixture of cleaning my brush and also picking up um, some more water because we're gonna, this is getting wet. Um, and that's cool, so. And you can just so it's like smoosh it all over the place. Get it smooshed. And again, you can go back in and um, add once that's dry, you can go back in and add more colours if you want to on the top. I probably won't. Watercolours, no matter what watercolours you use, they um, very often dry paler than you were thinking. So it's always best to go with the less option first less is more and then you can add to it so we are hopefully 
it's going to create a beautiful underwater scene. When your when your watercolor is really wet like this, and you want to do something like an underwater scene, go and get some rock salt and sprinkle it on top. Let the rocks let the painting dry, let it dry naturally, and then you can brush off the rock salt, and you'll be left with a beautiful pattern. It'll be absolutely lovely. But I've used. Um, the the masking fluid to make some splatters so where that's been i will get some white marks and they will look lovely too okay so this is pretty pretty quick to do and if you feel like you don't have any artistic skills this is still something you can do because it's dead easy i think you'll agree so i'm just going to splat some more water on there because i want it to kind of mix a bit Okay. And when you flick water on, you'll get some water, watermarks as well. Okay. Fabulous. Right. Um, need to let that dry, and then we can crack on with the next bit. Right. Then this stage is um both fun and a bit daunting at the same time. Again, you wanna make sure that your artwork is dry before you start rubbing off your masking fluid. Um, and once it's dry, you can start rubbing and revealing all the beautiful texture that you've cr created without really, really realizing it. So here we go. Okay, that's a bit of a wonky shaped bubble, but that's okay, we're gonna work with that. Um, I didn't practice what I preached and some of it wasn't quite dry in the middle where I rubbed it off, which means I have peeled off um, some of the paper, but that's okay. I'm a mixed media artist and I just think that that kind of adds to the texture um, and kind of makes it look just a bit funky, so I don't mind it. Oh, obviously I would have preferred it if I hadn't have done it, but these things happen and that's okay. I'm just feeling because I feel like there's a bit more on there. It's really hard when you've used blue on blue. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, this is a sea theme as you probably gathered. Um, in my sketchbook, I have some sketches I did. I did these sketches for um, the Lollipop Box Club and I'm going to use them, gonna cut it out and use it on my piece. But before I do that, I'm gonna color them in. bubble I decided to add a little bit of um, pink to it and then I decided I didn't like it so then I added some um, white acrylic paint to it so it wasn't quite how um, I first envisaged this piece going but sometimes that's just the way it goes um, and I just added a little bit of um, shimmer to my mermaid I um, as you see my mermaid isn't quite a flesh tone I quite like that kind of under like more like a silky underwater kind of skin tone on this so yeah a bit of blue and a bit of silvery shimmer so i hope you've enjoyed um watching and um having a look at, at how the nova watercolor markers work and hopefully it's inspired you to um have a go and do something like this yourself thanks for watching guys bye